In our previous tutorial, we configured the second level cache of Hibernate for our uh, user details entity class. So the steps that we followed were uh, first in our hibernate.cfg.xml, we enabled the second level cache. Uh, over here. So we added a property said use second level cache. We made it as true and we also supplied the cache provider class as the eh cache provider. We added the eh cache jar into our class path and then in our uh, actual entity we made this entity as cacheable because by default entities are not cached unless you specifically ask Hibernate to do so. Uh, once we did those two steps, we were uh, we were all set to use a second level cache. You know, the cache is being used by default. We don't have to specifically write any commands in order to use the cache. Hibernate automatically takes care of that for us. So, if same you know object is accessed across two different sessions, the second level cache comes into play and it's gonna you know uh, give us the data from the cache. Now this is fine, but now let's say I uh, instead of using a session dot get what I'm doing is I'm pulling up data using a query. So let's say I have a session dot create query and uh, okay, let me let me remove this and um, I will use a query object in order to get the same data. Now what I'll do is I'll do a query equals session dot create query and I will write the query here from user details user there user dot and let's verify the ID again it's user ID user ID equals one. I'm not going to do any parameter substitution because I want to keep this example simple. Now query is something I'll have to import from Java extra persistence. I'm sorry from um, Hibernate. So let me remove that. Okay, org.hibernate. I'm importing this. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to do a query dot list and it's going to give me the list of records. It's, here is just one uh, record. It's going to give me a list. List equals query dot list. I'll have to import the query, I mean the list again from java.util. Okay, so this is exactly the same as what we've done earlier. Instead of using a session dot get, what I'm doing is a session dot create query. Now, I will use the same thing in this new session. So what I'm doing is, after uh, after getting the list of users, I'm closing this session, I'm opening a new session, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I will say I'll call this query two. And uh, I will use the same list, that's fine. Let's say query two dot list. Okay, now how many queries will run? Let's uh, check this. Session is closed. Yeah, that's because I'm using the old one. The session two. Okay, so there you can see it's running two select queries. The first one is for uh, the first session and the second one is for the second session. Now why is this so? Because uh, we have already specified the, the cache right over here. Here you can see we already have the EH cache in place. Now, the thing is that Hibernate differentiates queries as something different. We need to specify a query cache separately. I'll talk in a minute about why we need to do that. But uh, see, just like we have a use second level cache, 
we need to have another property called use query cache and we need to set that to true as well. Query cache, we set this to true. Okay, so now what, what we're doing is we have a second level cache and we have a query cache. Now the query cache is actually different from your second level cache. The results of the query is not stored in the same place in the cache as it would store the results of a session.get which it has uh, cached in the second level cache. So actually you can think of this as three separate caches in Hibernate. The first cache is a session cache which you know which is uh, which comes up by default everything inside a session is cached the second cache is your uh, second level cache and the third cache is your query cache so in order to use query cache first thing is we need to uh, we need to enable this say use query cache this is already there we have already provided the cache provider so we don't need to do that again if you were not using a second level cache you were using just the query cache